Hello there, Year 9 Mathematicians, Mr. Herman here. And this video, I will be talking about what you guys need to have um, by the time you guys get back to 901 maths in the 2021 academic year. This video, we're going to be talking about what sets of work that I need to see. Um, the homework that was set during class as well on top of that and book work and also how to tackle the um, the set of homework that I gave out on the last day. So I know a few of you did not get this set of homework. Uh, this can be found on Microsoft Teams and also in Compass and I'll show you where you can navigate to find that. So for now what I wanted to talk about and what we should look at is when you head to our class up here where you see your learning tasks, you will now see a set of uh, learning tasks that will be readily available for you to um, put in or submit something. Uh, the biggest ticket item is CAT1 Algebra Test, which we did in class. Um, have a look at the score that, um, that you got. You can see your score within there. You'll also notice that I've got exercise 1A, 1B and 1C um, ready for you to upload as a learning task. Um, you'll notice that uh, within here, only a select amount of people need to show me exercise 1A, B or C because I did see some of them in class. So if you don't see your name um, or you don't see this general rollover exercise 1A, B or C within your learning tasks, it means that you've already shown me. Now, um, this is just based on what my records have indicated to me, what I've um, did in class. Uh, if you're confident that you've shown me a set of work and you have it up here that you need to show me, just take a picture and upload it anyways, okay? I need to make sure that it's received on my end or my record. Um, and if you've already completed the work, that shouldn't be a problem. All you gotta do is take a picture and upload it. Uh, if you're finding trouble that you're uh, uploading it on to Compass, you can always upload it to me via Microsoft Teams, um, whether that's in our channel, which I'll show you a little bit later, or you can just do a, a chat with me. Now also, you'll notice two other sets of homework. The first one is a factorizing homework, which I gave out during rollover. Uh, I did see um, probably about half uh, of that set of work, so there's still another 12 people I need to see that factorizing homework um, completed. Again, take a picture, upload it um, onto here. And the other one is the words to expressions and equations holiday homework. This I gave on the last day. Now there were a few of you that were away um, on that last day too from memory. So um, you two that are watching this video, you'll just have to go into Compass um, or Microsoft Teams. Uh, again, same process, take a picture, upload it. The only uh, thing that's different about this one is that this one actually has a due date, which is the 1st of February. Uh, 2021 and this is due 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the rest of this video will be showing how to tackle this um, this set of homework uh, but for now just make sure that you have readily available for you stuck into your book and all working out in your exercise book. The resources in the resources tab can be found in the rollover um, folder. Here you have the rollover booklet which is all the questions from 1a, b and c. Um, a few sets of examples that I gave while I was away during the days of rollover. Um, the first set of homework that I gave within the rollover and also the words to expressions and equations. This is the holiday homework that you've been given. So this can all be found here and also can be found within the learning task. And I'm also going to make it available within Microsoft Teams. With Microsoft Teams, which I'll pop up here. When you go into your Teams channel, obviously mine's going to look a little bit different to yours because I've got my own sets of classes. Um, 901 Maths, Mr. Herman, is the one that you main, not all communication, but some communication will be done here. Um, and I, I've left a little bit of a, um, of a post here already highlighting um, ways of communicating with me by email. I'm not usually on Microsoft Teams. Um, and the main reason why is because it just, on the odd chance, uh, it will work at home, um, but 90% of the times it doesn't. Um, it has to do with a connection issue, which unfortunately cannot be fixed. So at any point you need any help um, for whatever reason, please email me, and here's my email here. Um, please email me if you need any help during holidays. I generally check my um, emails once a day. Uh, 
during the holidays, um, during the night actually, that's when I see him. Um, so if you need any help, just shoot an email and I'm more than happy to help you when it comes to exercise work or the holiday work. Now this set of um, holiday homework that I gave you looks like this. It's called words to expressions and equations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few examples for you just to get you started and how to tackle this um, type of questions. You may have seen this already in 801 civil maths, um, but to get your maths jogs, maths jogs, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Um, your maths brain jogging, yeah, we'll go with that. Um, Let's uh, we'll, we'll do a few examples. Let's tackle a few examples. That way you can get um, the hang of it. Now there are quite a few uh, questions, uh, but in saying that, you guys are in 901 maths now. So there's gonna be quite a lot of hard work, especially during the six weeks off that you have. So if we look at the first one, um, expressions, and the second part is equations. Uh, before we even tackle um, an example here, just make sure you know the difference between expressions and equations. Expressions, uh, just means that anything that has terms um, with numbers or pro numerals, so you can have something like this, 2y, or you can have something that looks like 8z squared plus 4, um, or you can have something that looks as basic as y take away x. Okay, These are all expressions, um, and the main difference between expressions and equations is that equations have an equal sign expressions they don't okay so that's a main difference between expressions and equations so when you're tackling these type of questions for expressions I'm not expected to see anything with an equal sign okay we're just expressing ourselves we're not equating to something so set B write an algebraic expression to represent each quantity number one the sum of X and Y well we get X and we get Y and we sum them or just add them there's our expression, x plus y, as simple as that. And the second one, two more than b. So two more than b, we're gonna have b, and we're gonna have two more than that. So whatever b is, we're just adding two. Now obviously the first sets of questions are simple. It does get a bit more complicated as we get along, um, but just a little bit of a starter or introduction, that's how we tackle set b questions. Set c. Um, this one gets a bit tricky. We're kind of doing the inverse of what set B looks like. We're going to write a sentence to describe each of these expressions. So here we have quite a few of them here. Um, I'm just going to be focused on the first two. N minus 7. So I write a sentence to describe this expression. can be written as 7 less than N. 7 less than n um, because 7 less than n is just whatever n is and then take away 7 so 7 less than that this is our sentence format for question 1 question 2 uh, b plus 5 this is really simple you can just have 5 more than b 5 more than b and that's how we tackle the set questions for set c Set E, oh, it's still scrolling, that's too far, there we go. Set E, write algebraic expressions to represent the following conversions. So number one is the number of minutes in X hours. So what we want to do is we want to find the number of minutes, so the number of minutes in a certain amount of hours. So let's just break this down. If there's one hour, if there's one hour, we know this, this is equal to 60 um, minutes. Okay, so this is like a, a, a base um, a base equation that we're gonna use. Now I know we're not dealing with equations because we're in the expression types of questions, um, but this is just gonna be used to help us to determine a good expression for this. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Now we know two hours this is obviously equal to 120 minutes, but instead I'm actually going to write this as um, there are two lots of 60 minutes. Okay, there's two lots of 60. And technically this is one lot, obviously, because it's one hour. This is two lot, so three hours. This is going to be uh, equal to three lots of 60 minutes. We know this is equal to 120, and this is equal to 180, etc., etc. 
Um, and the reason why we're doing this is because if we have one, two, three, if we have x hours, if we have x hours, this is equal to, well, we can see the pattern here, two, two, three, three. So this has to be 60 lots of x minutes, which is just equal to 60x minutes. So the number of minutes in x hours, well, that's just dependent on um, how many hours there are. So this is just equal to 60x. Okay, and a lot of these questions are then set here, e, well, most of these questions have to do with the number of something uh, within another quantity of some sort. Again, no equal sign, it's just an expression. Now we get to the equation set questions, and this is where I'm expecting to see an equal sign. Um, I need to see an equal sign. It is an equation. You can even see it within the first four letters, E, Q, U, A. Every time I see equations, I always think of equals. So we're going to form an equation for each statement. Five more than a number equals seven. Now you got a little bit of leeway here. You can choose what letter you want to use because it doesn't specify which letter you should use. Generally speaking, students use the letter X because that's just the default letter in the algebra world. I'm going to use the letter T, uh, T for my first name Taz. So five more than a number equals seven. So we start off with the number T, five more than that. And this is equal to seven. We can use logic and determine, well, we actually know what t is equal to. t has to equal to in order for this to work. Um, so it doesn't necessarily say form an equation for each um, statement and solve. It doesn't say the and solve part. I would like you to solve this part. I want you to solve what the unknown letter is, if it is um, possible. If it gives you more than uh, one letter um, and there's no context to that letter, that can't be solved. Uh, the next one, 10 subtracted from a number equals 1. So 10 is subtracted from a number, let's do the letter y, and 10 is subtracted from that, <clears throat> so y minus 10, and this is equal to 1. So again, logically speaking, we know that this letter has to equal 11. Now we know that there are algebraic tools that we can use to solve this. Um, you can take the plus 5 to the other side, or you can balance the equation by minusing both five on, uh, minusing 5 on both sides to get uh, t equals 2, and adding 11 on both sides to get y equals 11. Um, if you can use your algebraic skills to solve this, you can. I've just used logic for the first set of questions because they're quite simple, but it, we'll see if we need to do it for the second question. So uh, 5 is subtracted from a number. Then the answer is multiplied by three to give a result of 21. So you gotta be very, very careful with this because this one, it doesn't allude to the fact that there are actually brackets. It's just not obvious. So five is subtracted from a number. So we start off with a number, let's just use X. And five is subtracted from this. Okay, so five is subtracted from a number, then the answer is multiplied by three. Now a lot of students will tend to write times three next to them, then get misled that they see, oh, times three next to the five, that must be x minus 15. That isn't the case. We have to work this out first, and we don't know what x is. So let's put this safety blanket around it. Let's put brackets around it. Then this answer is multiplied by three. Well, whenever something within brackets is multiplied by a number, that number pops to the front, because it's three lots of whatever this is. Aha, uh -huh, we've got our little expansion rules going on. Um, now, just to finish this off, let's give a result of 21. So this is equal to 21. <clears throat> now, there are two different approaches to this. I'm going to show you both ways. Uh, as long as you get the correct answer, I'm not too fussed which way you choose. Um, there is a preferable way because it saves a bit more time. Um, but we'll go from here. First thing we're going to do within this one, we're going to expand this out. And so using our expansion rules, 3 times x, this is 3x, and 3 times negative 5 is 15. This is equal to 21. Now, very, very important rule. I'm not too sure if you've learned this within year 7 and year um, 8, but whenever we are dealing with an equation that already has an equal sign, 
whenever you write the next line, you do not put an equals in front, okay? Because there's already an equals within here. So whenever we, we have an equation of some sort, do not write your next line with an equals, okay? Because <clears throat> you cannot have an equals within the same line. It's just the, a fundamental rule that we use within the algebra world. Um, so whenever you write your next line, you know there's going to be an equals there, so don't begin it with an equals, okay? So let's solve for this. We have 3x minus 15. Um, we're going to work backwards. We're going to try to get x by itself. So the opposite of minus 15 is plus 15. That's the first step. <clears throat> These two cancel out to be left with 3x by itself. And 21 plus 15 will give us 36. Now we have a multiply by 3. So we're going to do the opposite, which is divide by 3, divide by 3, these two cancel, and what we're left with is just x is equal to 12. And let's just substitute this back into here just to make sure 12 minus 5, which is 7, 7 times 3 is 21. This is correct. So that's one way of doing it. This is expansion way. The last way, and this will be the last example, um, we can see that there is this uh, 3 out in the front and it's being multiplied by x minus 5. Now we don't know what x minus 5 is, let's just treat this as some some um, expression that is just by itself, okay, within the bracket x minus 5. We can see that this has been times by 3. So let's see the opposite of times by 3 is divide by 3. So we're going to divide the whole thing by 3. And what do we do to the left? We do to the right. These cancel out. So we're left with our uh, x minus 5 by itself. There's no point putting the brackets there because we know it, that's just going to be left by itself. And how many 3's go into 21? This is 7. Plus 5, plus 5 to get x by itself. My x is equal to 12. Same answer. This method here, if it's doable, this is the preferred way, okay? Only when, when there are questions that have um, a, a number in front of set brackets, or so x minus five. If there was this plus three tagging along or minus seven tagging along, you have to get rid of that minus seven first, so maybe adding seven or doing the opposite operation before you can get to this stage, okay? Then you can go ahead and cancel out that three. But if you feel like, mm, I'm a bit rusty or a bit not, um, I haven't really seen this type of method before and you prefer the expansion and I'm working it out, that's completely fine as well. Provided that you get the same answer, okay? As long as you get the same or correct answer rather, I'm happy either way. And that concludes this video. Please make sure that you get these set questions done by its due date. Um, and also on top of that, 2020 has been a weird year, so enjoy your holidays as well. Get outside, read a book, get some fresh air, climb on trees, I don't know what kids do nowadays. Or young, young adults, I don't know, just cook, grow some vegetables, play some video games. Either way, make sure you relax and you do what makes you happy. Okay, it's been a weird year, so let's uh, end it on a good note. If you have any questions, you know my email. Until then, enjoy your holidays, and I'll see you next year in 2021. Bye.